it's Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the pages that I completed in 2023. Now, I have a good number of books out here to share with you guys. It may not be as many as many people, um, but as you guys know, I do enjoy taking my time with every page that I colour. And so I'm happy with the number of books I've actually managed to get my um some color into um yes there are many books that i didn't get around to this in 2023 and hopefully in 2024 i'll manage to get into them but um yeah i'll just get started because there's a lot here and the video is going to be a little bit long i'm sure um i will try my best to keep my rambling to a minimum a lot of people have mentioned that I am a little bit too chatty um and that prolongs my videos so I'm going to try and keep it to a minimum but um, maybe to speed up the process, I'll tell you that um, the supplies I use in pretty much every page is um, the pencils, are my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. Um, I use Thule Art paint pens. I use some glitter gel pens. And then if I've done anything different on a particular page, I'll let you know. But predominantly, my pages are all coloured with Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils. And then here and there, I've done a little bit of um, uh, playing around this year, actually, in 2023, actually, with different uh, pencils, with different mediums. And so I'll share that with you guys. So I won't go into too much depth for each illustration, because obviously I've done completed pages for every month. And I go into detail about every supply that I use, what I was thinking about that page, things like that. So in this video, I'll just try and... Um, present to you all the pages that I completed and um, depending on the time I will try and uh, share with you maybe my top 10 for 2023 and if I don't manage it on this video then I will just do a different video on that one. All right guys so let's get started. This is in no particular order because that would have taken me too long to just organize my books and so I've just pulled out the books that I've colored in and I'm just going to go through them randomly okay hope you guys don't mind. All right, so the first book um, I coloured in was uh, The Imaginary Forest by Jane F. Hankins. Um, this was a new artist to me for 2023. It was very kind. This book was very kindly sent to me by um, Happy Mail uh, from a lovely subscriber. And I absolutely love the unique art style. And I managed to get this uh, this page done um, in June, so mid-year. And uh, yeah. Not much to mention, I use my Albert Dura pencils and Thule Art paint pens and I didn't do that much embellishment. I used a bit, a bit of glitter gel pens. But I really, really like this um, style of art. It's very different to my other colouring books, so that's really good. It just adds a little bit of something extra to my collection. And the paper is wonderful. She doesn't have these books for sale anymore, unfortunately, the artist. But she does have a website up. So I think it's Jane F. Hankins, the website's name. And she is now selling um, or she's starting to sell her art in packs, I think, if I'm not mistaken. She's in, based in the US. Um, I've not tried ordering from her since... Um, I've never actually ordered from her. These were the, the books that, have, that I have of hers were sent to me. All right. So that was the first page. The second page, again, was a new artist to me for 2023. Um, Carolina Kubikowska, a very well-known artist. Um, I know a lot of you probably already have her books, but I didn't. They were quite pricey to get on Etsy. But when she came out with her new book, Rising, this year, I decided to take the plunge and get that book. And then at the same time, I managed to get this uh, book of hers, sorry, um, which is Magic Hour. And um, again, it's a beautiful book, beautiful paper. Now, on this page, I did use different um, materials. So the pencils I used for the leaves were the Albert Dura pencils. But for um, the witch, the hat, the hair, the cat, everything else, basically, all the other pencil work was done with Derwent Inktense pencils, which I absolutely loved. I didn't go over with any pencils dry over the top. The skin I did with my Albert Duras, but the rest was all um, the Derwent Inktense. Uh, which were new for, to me this year. And then the background, I tried playing with uh, watercolour paint. I have a lot of work to do with watercolour paints. I have a lot to learn, 
but I'm glad I I um, experimented. I played around and obviously I've got some sparkle there. And I think that's the Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallic in silver. Absolutely love the, um, that gel pen, the silver and gold. I don't have the other colors yet, actually. I think I should get them because they are very sparkly. But um, yeah, I love my first ever illustration colored um, by Karolina Kubikowska. And that was Magic Armor. Then the next book I have for you is Tatiana Bugema's Nice Little Town. And I've done a few pages in this book. So I think this was actually the first page I did for Valentine's Day in 2023. Um, loved doing this page. Don't like the paper at all. I do struggle with this Amazon paper. Um, but... I managed to use my Albrecht Dura pencils. They do bleed through even though, because the paper is so thin um, and it soaks up the water a lot, which is why it bleeds through. But I still managed to use water over my Albrecht Dura pencils. In fact, that's the only way I can actually color in, in these Amazon um, quality books, um, at least the ones which are not premium quality. I need to base with my pencils and go um, activate the pencils, then go over with the pencils dry. This year, or in 2023, I should stop saying this year, but in 2023, I also um, tried out alcohol markers for the first time. So I will start trying to use those in Amazon uh, quality books now and see how I feel about that. But I um, love how it turned out, even though I struggled with the paper. Um, really enjoyed that one. And then I, the other one I did, oh, this is the last one I did, which took me a while. You guys saw it as a whip for a long, long time. And again, my Arbrick Dura pencils. But what I did do different is I used Artex um, acrylic markers, the pastel brush, brush tip ones to add those little bushes of pink flowers in. And then I went over with my pencils just to make it look like there were flowers and to break up that massive tree that we had there. Um, as you see, I, I do enjoy using my Thule Art paint pen, so I cover up black lines a lot in Tatiana's work. I love her work. Um, I love my color coloring style in her work as well, how it all turns out. Uh, but yeah, I do cover up the black lines a lot and I do use them for accenting and just highlighting. Again, I liked this page. I struggled to finish it because it dragged for a bit. And when a page drags for a bit with so many different elements to color on it, um, it just takes me even longer to finish it because I lose that motivation. And then I did this page here. And this one, I'm trying to think. Um, again, I used my Albrecht Dura pencils, added the clouds in the background. The only difference is I think this uh, wall color was uh, black widow pencils to get that really really light color and then I shadowed a little bit with my Albrecht Duras but other than that um yeah it's just my Albrecht Dura pencils to the art paint pens and gel pens metallic and glitter sorry I don't know if I'm actually catching it but there we go love this the color of the curtains on this page I I very rarely come up with colors like that and um yeah I think it worked really well so three pages in this book that, a Nice Little Time, Valentine's Day by Tatiana Bogema. And then I have Evelyn Van Coatsum's Rose and Her Friends 2. I don't have her first book. This book was sent to me by the artist um, to review on the channel. And I absolutely actually loved coloring in this book. So it is an Amazon quality book, but it's on premium uh, the premium paper, like uh, Christine Karen's paper. And I feel my pencils work really well in, in um, these particular books, um, the premium quality ones. So I'm actually really happy with this book and I have enjoyed myself coloring. I only did two pages, but I really enjoyed them. And I have one marked for the winter season. Hopefully I get to it. Again, Albrecht Dura pencils, even the background, and I activated the background with the water, tiny bit of you know, buckling of the paper. But other than that, it worked well. And everything else is my Albrecht Duras. And again, Tuli Art paint pens. And a little bit of glitter gel pen. But 
beautiful her illustrations are beautiful this is the one i've marked for the winter season i don't know if i i'll do it oh yeah these i just saw it bleed through that was the alcohol uh -huh alcohol markers i had got them recently and i wanted to just try them out so i did it in such a tiny area and then I did this one. This is the first one I did in this book. And I absolutely fell in love with this book and this art style. Evelyn's work is just stunning. So adorable. Um, I don't usually gravitate towards portraits. But when I do colour them, I actually do enjoy them. I find them quite relaxing. Although I need to learn more skin tone. So if you see, I like my skin tone in this page. But I've used exactly the same skin tone for both the girls. Because I, I, I still need to learn combinations for skin tones because I don't do portraits that much but um yeah really like this page again I'll put your pencils I don't think I put much embellishment uh, yeah I used paint pens but other than that not that much embellishments um I don't think the illustration needed it and I didn't do a background I thought I loved that pop of color from all the fruit and I wanted to leave it as that really like that and I think I got the inspiration yeah from from her cover uh, illustration the blue and white that's where I got the inspiration for the scarf because I wanted the fruit and all to stand out yeah so that was two pages in Rose and her friends too um, by Evelyn Van Coetzen all right then I have a Julia Spiri book here um, an enchanting world this one was sent to me by Julia Spiri again um, an Amazon uh, book it's one of her older books actually it's not I think she's come out with a, re a book in 2023 of portraits um, but this is the book she sent to me and um, yeah I did this page as my first page I think soft pastels for the background and then just my Albrecht Dura pencils I think I used um, I feel like I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing and then paint pens and uh, glitter gel pens. A lot of the pencil hybrid geometallic in silver. Like it. I think I did, yeah, I did that in July. So sort of for Christmas in July uh, page. I don't think I managed any other pages for Christmas in July. So this was my simple one. And then this page was just a really quick um, page that I did just to play around with the Ohuhu alcohol markers when I got it. So my first ever work with uh, with any form of alcohol markers. I've never used alcohol markers before, and I think it wasn't too bad. But it seeps through a lot. This paper, you know, to be honest, the, yeah, the premium quality paper is a different feel. But I feel like sometimes the Amazon paper in each Amazon book varies a little bit. But um, yeah, the alcohol markers work. However, they do bleed and they do see through a lot yeah but I like my first attempt with them no pencils over the top so not a bad attempt for a first timer is it and that's Julia Spiri's An Enchanting World all right then everyone's one of uh, the favorite artists out there at the moment for a lot of people is RJ Hampson. I don't have many of his books. I've, this was the first book I got and now I think I have a couple of others, but this is the only one I've colored in so far. The others are fairly new. Um, a Frog's Tale. And I the reason I didn't get the other books, even though they're stunning, so the first books that he came out with was basically the Amazon paper. Um, I do get put off, discouraged by getting books that are on Amazon paper because I know that I don't enjoy the process of coloring on it as much as other books. However, now that I have alcohol markers, hopefully if I learn how to use them well, I may be able to tackle more pages in Amazon books. Um, so yeah, the reason I got this one is because the illustrations were just fantastic and the the Mr. Froggerty, the character is adorable. I loved it. Um, and so that's why I got it. And this is the first page I did. And um, on this page, I used soft pastels. The pencils I used was the Karen Dash Pablos on this page. Other than for the border, which I used my Albrecht Dura pencils for the gold. Um, and I used Tombow brush pen to base the frame as well. The, the burgundy sort of color and the maroon color. And then I went over with the pencils to give a bit of shadowing. But other than that, I think I used just the... Um, Pablo's and it's really funny how it sort of buckles the paper a lot just the pencils um, 
but I love how it turned out. I think, yeah, I struggle with the paper, but if I'm enjoying the illustration, I can some get past the paper sometimes. So I really did enjoy this one. And then um, the other page I did in this book was this one. This is a more recent page, actually. When did I do this? In November. And I love how this turned out. So here there's less warping. So what I decided was after I did that page and I realized just with my pencils how bumpy the page had become. I, I'm sure you guys can see that, right? Can you see all those waves there? Just with pencils, I did not like that effect. Yes, when I use water and if it warps, that's a different matter. I don't want it to look like that with pencils, but I hadn't used my Albert Dura pencils. So I decided I needed to do another page and test my Albert Dura pencils with it. So on this page, I did alcohol markers, Uhuhu alcohol markers, for a lot of the illustration, as you can see, all right, basing. And then I went over with my Albert Dura pencils um, dry over the alcohol markers but in certain areas I did use them wet as well and uh, yeah it works so much better there's not no warping with the Albrecht Dura pencils um, a lot better maybe I just need to learn how to use the Pablos because they are new pencils to me um, and so yeah it's going to take some time getting used to them maybe and that's probably why that might have been more um, user error on to get that wavy effect of the paper than um, the paper because the paper was absolutely fine here but I love this page um, really really enjoyed doing it love the colors love the warmth it looks so inviting and I like how I did the background really um, bold and dark and then it's sort of inviting you into into that little cozy um, corner <laughs> of a house try to do the light reflections from the fireplace as well yeah really liked this page and so that's two pages in frog's tail by rj hansen then i have a coloring heaven um alice in wonderland spe special and this is the first time i've tried this artist's work eva nikunen but i thought the, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a crazy fan for Alice in Wonderland or anything like that. I know the story. Um, I wouldn't get go out of my way to collect everything Alice in Wonderland, basically. But the art style is what um, drew my attention. I think the artwork was beautiful. Um, it's a shame that Colouring Heaven changed the paper. I used to like the paper in their older books. They worked better, but... Um, yeah, I coloured one page in this book, and this was the page here. So I used, yeah, I just used my Albrecht Dura pencil. Sorry, I was just thinking if I remembered. I did use water for the for the background um, to activate it, and then go over the with the pencils dry for the dress. I think I used my Tombow Jewel brush pens. Yes, uh, that bled through. So Tombow Jewel brush pens. Um, it doesn't usually bleed through, but the paper is really thin and maybe it was when I sprayed the fixative or something that it bled through. So Tombow Jewel brush pens are water-based markers, so they don't generally tend to bleed through paper unless it's very thin paper. Um, I loved doing this page. I, I found it relaxing. I loved the art. I lo loved the perspective. However, I feel like I'd gone too bright blue with the dress. I should have maybe toned it down to like the color of the flowers there, a lot less lighter. It would have, it would have looked so much better. Um, but it's a page done. And I do remember enjoying doing everything else other than the dress. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Alice in Wonderland special. The artist is Eva Nikunen and it's um, a Coloring Heaven magazine. Another colouring have in the magazine. This is the only other one I, I um, tackled this year uh, in 2023 was Enchanted Animal Special by Kanoko Egusa. Now, I couldn't have skipped this um, edition. I love Kanoko's work and um, I loved this edition. There's so many beautiful illustrations. And if she comes out with her own book with some of these illustrations as a repeat, I never buy repeats, by the way, guys. But if she does, I will get it because, yeah, obviously on better paper, I will enjoy it more. But I did this wreath um, and I absolutely enjoyed it. I just love coloring at Kanoka's work. The way she does her illustrations, 
it just when you add color to it it's always going to look good just it's it's her art basically that makes the illustration good but i really enjoyed doing this because of all the berries and the fruits and um i just loved it yeah i didn't bother to do a background i thought that was really nice and bright and bold without a background i didn't want to take away from that and it's okay sometimes not to do backgrounds um backgrounds are the most challenging part for me so when i can avoid doing one i i, I would love to just avoid it but yeah really enjoyed that just pencils a little bit of paint pens and that's it albert Dura pencils and i did use them activated with water and then with the pencils dry over the top and that's it i don't think her illustrations i barely ever use uh, glitter gel pens and metallic pens i don't think it ever needs it when i finish my list her co uh, coloring a page of Kronoko Gru says i always look at it and be like oh i don't actually need to add anything else to it it's all done um but yeah, I remember someone had asked me to do a how I color video on blueberries. So I'm going to try and make sure I find a good page to do that. And I will try and do it this year, hopefully. I think I've done one on blackberries, haven't I? Raspberries, blackberries. So I'll try and do one on blueberries. All right. Coloring Heaven, Enchanted Animal Special. It was uh, celebrating 100 issues of Coloring Heaven, by the way, guys. And it's by Kanoko Egusa. Beautiful artist. All right. Then... So I guess I, this wasn't really in order, but um, I have a lot of my Amazon books out here. But anyways, this is Christine Karen's Fairies. And um, it's a premium quality paper, so works better with my pencils. Um, and I don't mind colouring in it. Um, yes, it's thin and I would prefer better paper, which I do have her artist quality book. I just haven't tackled it yet. Uh, but this is the page I did in this book. Um, like I said... I have a lot to learn when it comes to skin and so I'm glad that I picked a page where I could try out a dark skin tone and I do like how it turned out actually um not bad for I think it might be one of my first tries at a dark skin tone maybe I've done it early on in my coloring for a very small uh, person on a page or a very small area of skin so I wouldn't count that um but for such a large area I think it's the first time and I think I quite like the color I hope I saved it. Um, but yeah, just my Arbrook Dura pencils for the background. Again, Arbrook Dura pencils, but activated with water and then went over with the pencils dry. And uh, border with a glitter jar pen. I put a bit of, um, I don't know if you can see it picking up. Um, a little bit of um, Spectrum Noir clear glitter. And yeah, love it. Love the purple background. So that's the only one I've done in Fairies by Christine Karen. But I did get, get this book quite early. And then because I don't do portraits that often, these the portraits in this book are quite large and the main element. Her other books nowadays have them in different positions and it's not just a close-up of the, the face. Um, so um, that's why I hadn't managed to get to this book yet because I found it quite difficult to do skin. Um, but I wanted to make sure I did at least one page before I bought her artist quality book. So now I've done that page. <laughs> All right. This is Christine Karen's Fairy and Fantasy. These are the only two Christine Karen books I have in from her Amazon books, um, which I'm really glad about because at least I won't have as many doubles um, since I've got the her new book now. So I did this page very early in the year in January. Now, with Christine Karen's pages, usually I tend to try and replicate her original art style because her color combinations and her style of coloring and highlighting on her pages is amazing. And there's so much to learn in them. And I just like to replicate it. And once I've seen it, if I don't have an idea for a page and I happen to go and look at her original art style, once I see her art style, I know I'm not going to be able to do anything better and I can't get her um colors out of my mind so then i just end up replicating it again just my albert Dura pencils activated with water yes again not as much warping even though it's thin paper i don't use much water though um and yeah everything is basically how she's done it in her her work but she uses watercolor paints and then pencil um i obviously don't have the skill to use watercolor paints for portraits um i'm still learning how to even try using them um on backgrounds and stuff so i just use my pencils and yeah i do enjoy trying to replicate it 
And then the other one I did was this one, which is in December. And I love how this one turned out. Um, I used soft pastels for the background. And then the pencils, the Art Dura pencils. I did use paint pens and, um, and yeah, that's it. A little bit of gel pen. Not gel pen. Um, the Guangna Super Gold um, Acrylic Markers paint pens, paint markers. Um, but yeah, not very good at catching all that shine or sparkle. Sorry, guys. But I really loved doing this page. Even though I've got her new book, this illustration wasn't in her new book and I really felt like colouring it. So um, that's why I did that one. Um, so yeah, sometimes I don't copy her illustration. So this one was not replicated from hers. This is the first one I had ever done. Um, but yeah, I did not replicate. And I think the one I showed you in fairies was also not one which I replicated. So if I get an idea, I'll try and do it my own style. But if not, and I happen to see her original, I try and replicate it. All right. Then the next artist we have is uh, the next book we have is Teresa Goodrich, um, Autumn Charm. So I don't usually like getting just a seasonal book because I'm not fast enough to colour in them. Um, but uh, yeah, Teresa's work is absolutely stunning. And um, I managed to get two pages done this year. So that's good. So this I did for Halloween. And I love how it turned out. I used my Ohuhu alcohol markers for the background, the sky and everything. And then I went over with the pencils, Albert Dura pencils. And I tried to do like a misty sort of effect to it. Hopefully it comes across. I thought it looked good um, to make it look a little bit more spooky. I added sort of that effect of the moon being there. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed coloring this and using alcohol markers. Yes, they do speed up the process, but I'm still slow enough to, for it to take long enough to color a page, even with alcohol markers. I'm always going to go in with my pencils. I love a pencil finish to my pages, but loved doing this page. And then the other one I did, I think it was earlier than October. Yeah, this one. I absolutely loved this page. And um, Albert Dura pencils. I did a tiny bit with, yeah, I had just got the alcohol marker. So I just based the, the path. That was the last thing I colored on the page, I think. And um, I just based it with the alcohol markers and then went over with my pencils. But everything else is just my uh, pencils. I'm just trying to think whether I might have based my leaves with Tombow Jewel brush pen and a lot of Thule Art paint pen work. I added the rain, which I loved doing. I love how my water turned out, the reflections from the trees I tried to add into the water. Um, I tried to add in the shadow of the bridge into the water. I love trying to be experimental with um, Teresa's work. Um, so yeah, I love, I added the little drip, drips of water from the umbrella. Yeah, I really enjoyed this page. I enjoyed both the pages. I really like Teresa's work. And the one I'd done before that, I think was only one, this one. I think there's a color along for this on the channel, by the way, guys. Um, yeah, again here, I experimented by adding uh, fallen leaves in. This was in 2022 though, but anyways, I added uh, effect of sort of fallen leaves on the ground and I sort of filled out the tree I know it's autumn and there shouldn't be that many trees, but maybe it's early autumn, although the leaves are orange. So, but anyways, I filled out the trees, um, which I liked and adding that effect of the glass. So yeah, I really like experimenting in her books. But that's Autumn Charm by Teresa Goodrich. I love the new book, autumn book she came out with. Autumn Harvest is it? But because I already had an autumn book, like I said, I struggle to get many pages done. And so it doesn't make sense to me to have more than one autumn book, although that autumn harvest book is stunning. So I may, if this coming year, might have to end up getting it. But um, yeah, then I also have one of her Christmas books, which is this one, Christmas Charm, Teresa Goodrich. And I managed just one page. And this is the one I did. Um, and I really enjoyed it. So this page I used Derwent Ink Tense. So the snow I did with my Albert Jura pencils, um, 
because I didn't think I'd be able to get a soft enough effect with the Derwent Ink Tents yet. I have to still play around with them um, to see if I can get softer effects. So the sky and the snow I did with the um, my Arbor Dura pencils, but then everything else I did with Derwent Ink Tents and I don't think I went over the top with pencils. Oh yeah, and I based some of the leaves. So I think I'd left this these part of the leaves till the end of the coloring and I was getting a bit um, fed up with all the green trees. And so I just quickly based it with alcohol markers and then went over with the pencils, um, uh, the Derwent pencils. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed using the Derwent Ink Tents. Um, love how it, this page turned out. I love the effect and I added so much Windsor and Newton white ink. Uh, splatters to make it look like falling snow. Really, really enjoyed this page again. Another good Teresa Goodrich page, and I've, that's the only one I managed just this year. Um, so I've only done two in this uh, book. This one was a year before. Loved doing that as well. Again, a lot of experimenting with adding snowdrops and uh, small snow piles and things like that. So I just love her her books, um, Christmas Charm by Teresa Goodrich. All right, then I have uh, Nature's Magic by Stratton Peterson. I think it was a new book this year. It was sent to me as a, uh, sent to me by uh, Lomart, the publishers, and um, she has, a, I think, another book coming out this year. Um, is it Luna? I think. I don't have her first book, which is the animal, the animal one. I can't remember the. Oh, I can't remember the name of the first book. I want to get it because I did enjoy coloring, although I only managed one page in this book so far, but I did enjoy, really enjoyed coloring it. So I am going to get her first book eventually, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the next book, Luna, is going to be like. I don't know when it's coming out, March, April, sometime then maybe. And uh, this is the page I did, and I absolutely loved it, probably because it was berries and leaves, and I do love coloring those. Um, I left the moon to the to the end because I didn't know what color to do it, whether to do it gray or whether to make it a bit yellowish. And once I'd done all the colors in the foreground, I just decided to use the colors from my berries to do the moon. And I love how it turned out. Really, really enjoyed this page. And I love that I did the white flowers, which just pop out with all the greens and purples. Um, so really, really enjoyed it. And I put a uh, pencil height, dual metallic, um, in gold uh, for the center of the flowers and yeah really enjoyed that page even though it had repetitive elements I, I found it quite relaxing um, coloring this particular page I didn't feel the need to take too many breaks from it um, so yeah that's the only page I managed I had picked one out for this winter season oh yeah I really do like this page I just need the time to color it but yeah, there we go. So Stratton Peterson's Nature's Magic. Again, a new artist to me for 2023, I think. All right, and this one too. Uh, no, this one I bought a lot earlier, but it's the first time I colored in it. Um, so this book I've had for a long, long time, the Briar Coloring Book. And I finally tackled a page in it and I loved coloring it, the process of coloring it, the paper. Is just fantastic. Um, nice art style, very different, um, challenging, I think, to color. I think I picked a simpler page, um, but I enjoyed it. I used my Arbitro pencils like for the background and stuff and for the pencils over the top. The basing I did with my Tombow Jewel brush pens and um, I did quite a bit of Tombow Jewel brush pen basing, meaning sometimes I just put down one color as a highlight color and then I go over with my pencils. But in this case, I used my light uh, light pen and then I used dark pens in the sh 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 sorry shadow areas and then went over with my pencils. And so it did speed up the process. I think if I'm not mistaken, I managed it in um, one day, <laughs> which for me is pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah. A bit of uh, gel pen as well, but loved coloring this page and I'm so glad I finally tackled. It's not an uncolored book anymore, but yeah, you can see the art is very challenging to color. So I'm not sure yet whether I have the skills to color these illustrations. And we do have some original art style or art, a colored art for these illustrations for some of them in the back 
of the book and oh my goodness they're just amazing and there's no way I could um, do anything like this so I'll have to see whether I'll be able to tackle all the pages. I did um, get inspiration from the original art by the way to do the my page but yeah beautiful art whether I can do it justice I don't know but I chose a very simple page to start with so hopefully now I'll be able to color in it again so that's the Briar coloring book then again this was another uncolored book and um, it's April's Forest Girls premium edition the hard copy now it's got really really good thick paper but um, I found that wet media wasn't working very well on it surprisingly um, so I was struggling a bit I was feeling like which is quite surprising because I was using my Arbrook Dura pencils, not watercolour paint. So Arbrook Dura pencils with minimum water, some Derwent ink tents I did for like a couple of the panels. And then I just switched to my Arbrook Duras. And even with the Arbrook Duras, um, the water was pilling the paper, which is quite surprising because I would have expected it to work really well. Um, so I had to change tactics and I started using my Tombow dual brush pens for basing direct to the paper because again if I was taking it off a palette it was pilling the paper um, even though I use such little water so I just used the Tombow dual brush pens for basing and then I went over with my pencils dry my Albrecht Dura pencils dry and then it worked for me so now that's how I'm going to probably tackle the rest of the pages in this um in this book but I loved it and I like again replicating her original art style because of her color, her color choices are very different to what I would choose. Very muted colors, very subtle colors in certain areas. Um, so I love her color combinations and um, especially for her interiors. She does really nice and different interiors. Um, oh yeah, by the way, my, I think the red Tombow Dual Brush Pen, when I use Fixative, it bled through even though it's on such thick paper, but it did bleed through a bit, which is sad. Luckily, there's no illustration on that side to colour. But, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this page. All right, so at least I coloured a page in this book. That's Forest Girls Premium Edition. But, yes, I think I will have to use my water-based markers as basing. All right, then the next book, again, it was an uncoloured book, uh, was the Rabbit's Fairy Tale book. Have I... Yeah, Rabbit's Fairy Tale book by Cotoli. And it's a beautiful book, very cute, very innocent. And this is the first page I managed to tackle. I think more than anything, it's just having such a large number of books makes it so hard to get around to all the books, doesn't it? Which is really sad because I've noticed when I was pulling out all these books, there are so many books that I haven't managed to color in or artists I haven't managed to color in that I used to color in so much. Um, so it was quite sad to see that, um, but it's bound to happen with so many books now. Um, but this is a page I did, Albrecht Dura pencils activated with water and then dry and a lot of uh, metallic pen. I think that was the Guang Na, um, super gold acrylic markers and uh, paint pen work and that's it simple beautiful um and i think i did use a bit of tombow dual brush pen for basing to map out my colors because there were so many little little elements which i actually really struggle with with all these tiny elements like so many books and then pencils and i do find it hard to tackle pages like that and make sure i don't go crazy with using every single color in my in my albert Jura set but love how it turned out and a bit of sprinkling of Windsor and Newton white ink. So that was Rabbit's Fairy Tale, Cotoli. And then at least I managed a couple of pages. Yeah, in, um, sorry, Makiko Inotome's Wild Mouse Yururi's book. He's come out with a new book, um, the seasonal, the wreaths one um, for the seasons, uh, which is beautiful as well, actually um so yeah but this is the page i did one of the pages i did this is a color along on the channel if i remember 
I will try and link it in the, in the description box below. But more than likely, with so many books here, I'll probably forget because there are other colour alongs. So um, there will be a separate pay playlist um, for Wild Mouse Yururi's Journey um, as the book. So you can always go and find it there if you are interested in the colour along. Uh, soft pastel, I think, for the background and then pencil uh, Albert Jura pencils over the top. I don't know if I, I feel like I might have based the wood as well. And I use Albert Dura pencils activated with water and dry. I use Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing, but you'll see it in the colour along. Not much. Um, I don't even know if there's any glitter gel pen or metallic pen. Again, I don't think it needs it in this book. Such beautiful art. All right. And then this page I absolutely enjoyed doing. Um, I love how my pumpkins turned out, very different to how I usually do them, just or bright orange. So I really like that I changed that up. Um, I kept it very simple, didn't go with them, you know, full page background. I just did a bit of sh shading underneath the elements and um, love how this guy turned out here. And yeah, I just tried to keep the, the, the colors very limited and that's very rare for me because I find it very hard to do that. It's actually... A, genuinely a challenge for me to limit my colors um so when i do manage to do it um yeah i i really enjoy how it turns out and um yeah i like the little pops of red basically and blue i think it works really well um albert Dura pencils that's it activated with water and dry and that was makiko inotomi's wild mouse yururi and then this was a new book that was sent to me by a Korean pub publisher. Um, did I write it down? Sorry, guys, my phone stopped recording. Um, but this is a uh, book called Cat's Autumn Picnic sent to me by a Korean publisher. I have shared videos about this um, this book, a flip through of this book and another book by the same artist um, and how to order it from um a korean website called aladdin because of course we don't have book depository anymore to order from but uh yeah the publishers very kindly sent this one to me and two of them to me but i colored in this one and i absolutely enjoyed coloring in this book um if you guys are um familiar with uh, korean books they're the style or the quality sorry of the korean books are very very nice and the style of the artwork is so unique. Um, April is a Korean, Korean illustrator in the books as well. Um, so yeah, really good quality paper. The illustrations are so innocent, so so cute. And I tackled this page here and I pretty much um, tried, I got inspiration from this page. I didn't copy it exactly. I love my version because of the colors. They're a bit more bright for me, not as, a limited a color palette as I've, I've mentioned um but i really liked using the same color for the leaves um loved all the variety of yellows oranges and reds they used so yeah i, I did get inspiration even for the animals um mm. i just copied the animals because i wouldn't have been able to make them all look different kept it very simple no fur effects or anything and i loved that about this book that i didn't have to worry about making it look realistic and um yeah love how it turned out and i think the artist has come out with a new book i think a winter book haven't got it yet um i don't know if i'll be ordering it anytime soon until and unless i have a few korean books to buy again um but yeah loved coloring this page so that was uh, a new to me artist um uncolored book Cat's Autumn Picnic. Beautiful. So a seasonal book. All right. Now I'll just grab a few more books and I'll be right back. All right. So my next few books will be my hardback books, the familiar hardback books of so Maria Trolle, Clara Markova and Hannah Carlson. And this is where I was very disappointed with myself because I realized how little I colored in their books compared to what I used to color in them because Yes, they were very early books, some of the uh, very early artists for me. And I used to obviously have a smallest collection of books and I used to be able to color in the books so much. Um, so I'm really disappointed in myself. And hopefully this year in 2024, I'll manage to color a bit more, especially Maria Trolle. I barely went to her books and Clara Markova's because it takes me a while to color her books. But anyway, and I like to take my time with her books. But anyways, my first one is Maria Trolle's Flora. 
not in order, but um, I did this page and I remember really enjoying this page and I've done it as a full color along on the channel. Um, so you can check it out. Uh, the playlist will be uh, Flora by Maria Trolle. So there will be a dedicated playlist. Every book um, that I'm going to share on the channel will have its playlist. So whenever I do a color along from that same book, it'll be within that playlist. So um, yeah, if you're interested in any of the books, in any of the pages I say is a color along, there will be a, play a separate playlist for it. So you, you'll be able to find it. Um, Albert Dura pencils. And the only thing I did different here, there were so many leaves. There was no way I was going to spend so much time coloring each one in just pencils. So I think I picked out like um, two or three colors of Tombow Dual Brush Pens in green. You'll see it on the color along if you're interested. And just randomly colored over the leaves and then with one pencil did a bit of shadowing. And um, I love how it turned out. So left the highlight areas as the base Tombow color. So that's why it looks a little bit um, different and there's a variety of greens there. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed doing that. I really enjoyed doing the water. It doesn't look realistic. It looks more whimsical, more fairy tale sort of. Um, but I tried doing reflections of pink in the water, which I really enjoyed. Um, I don't plan out my pages. It just happens as I'm coloring and I might get an idea and then I try it. Um, so I really like how that turned out. Um, but yeah, um, there's a color along. Flora by Maria Trolle. Then I have Botanicum by Maria Trolle, and I did one page again here. I do not think there's a color along for this one. I think I might have done this on, on my own. Again, really enjoyed it. Um, at first I did the background with my Albert Dura pencils, activated with water to give the watercolor effect, and um, after I did the background, I was wondering why did I put blue on the bottom and such a prominent dark blue and then green on the top. So at first it wasn't working for me, but once I did all the color, I think it works. And I, I really like how it turned out. I added um, the little bit of grass effects on the back just to fill up the page a bit more because it was quite sparse, the plants that were already there, the flowers. Um, so I just used my Albert Dura pencils with, um, on a palette and then used a brush off the palette and just did it like as if I was painting. Um, not that I know how to paint, but I like how it turned out. Um, yeah, I really liked it. And I did a blue heart for autism awareness, I think, um, autism, autism awareness month or something. So I added the blue heart myself. But yeah, really, really like how this page turned out actually. And I did, I tried to fill up those little pink um, flowers as well by adding some more pink to it because again I felt it looked a little bit empty <laughs> but I enjoyed it so that was um, Maria Trolle's Botanicum and the only other Maria Trolle I colored in 2023 which is why I think it's really ridiculous I barely colored any Maria Trolle which is such a shame because the books are just, just stunning and I used to color in them so much but this is the one I did, sorry, um, from Moon Valley. It was an uncolored book. And so I'm glad I at least did one page in it. And this is the page I did. Again, Albert Dura's, even for the background, activated with water, I think. Um, I'm just trying to think, no, maybe that was Neo Color 2, so it looks like. I can't remember, guys. No, I think that's Albert Durer's. It's Albert Durer pencils activated with water and then everything else is also Albert Durer's. Um, but yeah, like how it turned out, simple page. Yeah, that's Maria Trolle's Moon Valley. Then um, I did a Clara Markova page from her newest book, The Sort of Secrets from My Fairy Has. The first one I did, I might as well show you the first one was just to test out my mediums because she had mentioned that the paper was going to be different. And uh, so I just did this very simple, mindless coloring on this particular page here. And I used Tombow Jewel brush pens, um, activated. Oh yeah, I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for the base, but I used water on the, on the paper to blend them out and it worked really well. And it's not common to find books that that works with because you usually need marker paper for that. It works in some Japanese um, 
edition books, few Japanese edition books. Um, but other than that, I've not really experienced being able to blend with Tombos with water or direct um, with water or with each other. So Tombow to Tombow direct on the paper. Um, so it worked in this book, which is great. So I did quite a bit of that on that page and it didn't bleed through which is good as well. So it's really nice paper with regards to that. My Albert Dura's worked really well as well. So I was really happy to find that out because um, I like using my Tombows for basing. All right, and this is the page I managed to tackle. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Just, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, just my Albert Dura pencils and Tombow Dura brush pens for the background as well. Um, yeah, and of course a lot of paint pen work and some glitter gel pen and metallic pen. But yeah, like how it turned out. But that's the only page I managed to tackle. And I haven't done this side of the page yet either. Usually I just use the same colours on, on this side. But I usually do it as mine as colouring. So I don't do it all at one go. If and when I can't find something to colour or I just need a few moments of colouring, I can pick these pages out. Um, yeah. So that was Little Secrets from My Fairy House by Clara Markova. And the only other Clara Markova I managed, and this is why I'm saying I, I, I feel so disappointed with these books um, that I'm showing in this bit. Uh, fairy Celebrations by Clara Markova. And I did this page for Mermaid in 2023. And there is a color along for this on the channel. And I loved coloring it. I love how it turned out. I love my white flowers. I just love everything about it. But I used uh, Albert Dura pencils for everything. Background activated with water for the sky and the water. And then for the with the pencils dry, paint pens. Loved it. Like I said, there will be a playlist uh, for this book as well. So if you are interested, memory will be up um soon <laughs> so if you are interested i'll have to go back and look at how i did my flowers because i don't remember how i did them like i said i just try things on a page and then sometimes i forget how i did them so i'm going to have to look at the video myself and figure that out but love that page again haven't done this side of the page yet yeah i love clara's books i take my sweet time with them and i think that's why um because i've had limited time as well i don't get as many pages done a month nowadays um my clara books get left out a little bit all right then i have hannah carlson i did i forgot about this page i didn't realize i did it in 2023 so hannah carlson summer nights and this is the page here that i did and um this was a page, oh yes, I used uh, watercolor paints. So I don't know if you guys remember um, that I had bought a watercolor paint set maybe in 2022, end off or something, and I hadn't started using it yet, but I wanted to try and learn how to use them and start using them a little bit in some of my books, especially in some of the really good quality books. And um, so yeah, I think this is one of my first attempts. Um, Hannah Carlson's illustrations especially in her older books have a lot of background space that we can play with and the quality of the books are really good so we can play around with water media and um so yeah i think i've tried out a couple of pages with watercolor paints so the background is with watercolor paints i based all the blue with watercolor paints and then i went over with my arbor Jura pencils love the color of my leaves here love the color palette actually i chose for like the leaves and flowers quite muted Although the blue is very, very obvious, but um, yeah, we really liked colouring that page. So that was Hannah Carl's on Summer Nights. Then I have Hannah Carl's on Seasons. This is my first ever book that I bought of Hannah Carl's on, and I've done so many pages in this book, and which is why I am so disappointed that I don't get around to her books as much. But I feel like I'm a little bit lost with her books in that because I haven't coloured them in a while, I don't know how to tackle them again. So every art style is different, isn't it? Um, so it's, yeah, I, I need to start colouring in her books a bit more. I do like her older books more. And maybe that has sort of 
steered me away from it because every time I've colored in her newer books I've not enjoyed I, I have enjoyed them but not as much as these old books but anyways um her artwork is so beautiful again I used watercolor paints on this page tried to play around with them had no idea what I was doing I don't think I've done a good job I think it's a mess um don't know what I was doing had no plan um but I played around with it and I tested it and that's good and I did a bit of sprinkling with the watercolor paints and metallic paints as well and just my Albert Dura pencils love how the bottles turned out but I think having such a vibrant background takes away from the pencil work so yeah I don't think this is the best page but I'm glad I played with my watercolor paints this in 2023 and then I did this page and I absolutely loved this page this was earlier I think in the year yes in January and there is a color along for this on the channel so there'll be a playlist for this book on the channel um distress inks for the background and then everything else is albert Dura pencils and paint pens and windsor and newton white ink with a snow sprinkling love how i did my snow and the reflections and added a bit of pink and purple to it love how it turned out but yeah there's a color along for that one on the channel so that's Seasons by Hannah Carlson. And this page you must have seen as a whip for such a long time. So you'll remember it when you see it, is this page here. But I'm so glad I did it. Um, I haven't cut it in this book since because I like to do it as double page spreads. Um, lack of time, guys. But I love how this page turned out. Um, watercolor pencils my Albrecht Dura pencils for the background to give a watercolor effect and even the foreground is all pencils and I may have used a bit of Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing but other than that um, just my pencils and paint pens and sprinkling um, of metallic watercolor paints and that's pretty much it. Love how my ladybugs pop off the page with that bright red. Again I liked doing the white flowers I love how light the pink and blues are. Yeah, I really liked doing this page. Um, so there we go. So that was Hannah Carlson's Spirit Animals. And it just shows how much I like the older books. I like the older books more. I only managed one book from her new series in um, 2023. I only have three of her books. I don't have this city among the stars tales from the city among the stars and i do not the new one atlantis i think i will get it um i haven't got city among the stars because it didn't really look like my style there was a lot of sort of steampunky uh, style to it which i'm not too keen on coloring so much metal um so i haven't got that one whether i will or not in the future i'm not sure it's there on my wish list i'll see um but definitely Atlantis, I think I want. It's not yet released in the English edition, so I'm waiting for that. I think it's this month. Not sure I'll get it straight away, but um, the only other ones I have is Midnight Masquerade, uh, Forest Kingdom, and Witch's Cottage. But I only managed to colour in this book. It was an uncoloured book, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken. Was it? Yeah, it was an uncolored book, so I really wanted to get some color into the book. And so I did this page, which I absolutely love, actually, um, because I don't come with such fantastical sort of colors, uh, come up with such colors uh, for pages myself so often. So when I got the inspiration, like when I got the idea to do it, I was like, yes, let me just go ahead and do it. Um, background is with Distress Ink, and then everything else is my artwork jewel pencils I think I can't remember I'm just trying to think I think there might be a color along for this yes there is a color along for this on the channel so you'll be able to find out I think it is my artwork jewel pencils and I would have used Tombow jewel brush pens a lot for basing as well and paint pens a lot of paint pens and I really liked coloring this page actually um, so yeah And then this page here, yeah. So this page I did with the uh, Derwent Ink Tents, all Derwent Ink Tents other than the hair and the skin. 
that was my Albert Dura pencils. The back and the back one. <laughs> the back one, I can't remember if it was, yeah, I think it was Dura, uh, it was um, my Albert Dura pencils because I didn't know if I would, I think this was one of the first pages I did with Derwinting's Tents as a, a whole page. Um, and I didn't know whether I'd be able to work with it for the backgrounds yet. So I did the background with my Albert Dura pencils activated with water to give the watercolor effect. And then I used the Derwinting Tents for the foreground to play around with them. And I used it even for the um, cauldron and I didn't go over with the pencils. Uh, any pencils dry over the top which was really good. Um, so it worked really well, but I enjoyed doing that. Yeah, again, a limited palette, <laughs> not very common for me. Um, Hannah Carlson's Tales from the Witch's Cottage. Then I have um, Animal de la Forêt by Caroline, I think it was, where was it? Caroline Allen, very small book, art therapy book, you can see, um, quite a type. Oh, I have a Rita Berman book here. So smaller than a Rita Berman book. Yeah. And um, I did one page in this book. Very nice quality paper. Pages, some of them I really, really like. Um, and I keep flipping through it and I want to colour in them. Um, but I only managed this one page, even though it's such a tiny book. Although I didn't get it that, I got it a bit later in the year. Um, but I really enjoyed colouring this page. Now I do have a how I colour video on this, um, how I colour using paint pens um, for basing and basically painting with them and then um, colouring over with the pencils and I loved trying that effect out. I do use it for smaller elements, I've never used it for a full page and because it was such a small illustration with such large areas to experiment with, I decided to do that. And I shared it with it, with, with you guys on the channel. And um, I love doing it because it gives a different effect, sort of a painted look effect. Even though I went over with the pencils, it covers up the lines, obviously, when you paint over with the paint pens. So you don't have any of the black lines and um, you do all the shadowing and stuff. I used my Tuli Art paint pens. Um, sort of direct to the paper and then I used a paintbrush to sort of paint it out and then I went to and and the reason I like doing that is because it flattens out the uh, acrylic paint so then it's easier to color over because you can't get that many layers on it um, especially if it's quite a thick layer of pa uh, paint. Now recently in later part of the year I think um, acrylic markers became quite a big um, a big thing so with brush tips so basically acrylic paint but it, as a brush tip so when you lay it onto the paper it gives a nice flat surface to color over a bit easier so basically I was doing the same thing but with my Thule Art paint pens and um, the acrylic sets that I have that were sent to me for review but the ones I have are much smaller sets than the Thule Art paint uh, the Thule Arts range of colors so I wanted to try and use my Thule Arts in a different way other than just for covering lines and highlights so that I could use the darker shades that I have in my sets as well. And yeah, really enjoyed doing it on this book. So hopefully I will do it on more pages. Now, it, acrylic paint pens are obviously opaque, so it will cover up any detailing. So for example, if you were to do it on that mushroom there, um, so lay down the paint pen and use a paintbrush to sort of paint it over the whole surface of that mushroom. It will cover up those dots. So you have to keep that in mind. On this page, there wasn't that many details that I was losing. And so it worked really well for this page. And I struggled with what colors to do for the frogs, but I'm glad I went for those very vibrant colors. I barely use greens like that in my coloring. So I really like how it turned out. And then the other thing I experimented with this page was a blurry background. Um, trying to channel my inner Chris Cheng to try and do those blurry backgrounds, the beautiful backgrounds that she does. I know she uses Prisma colors, um, but it is possible to do it with other pencils. You just have to have that patience. And boy, she has patience, definitely, because on such a small area, it took me a while, but um, I enjoyed doing it. And that reminds me, I don't know how I color video on this page and shared with you guys how I um, do the blurry, how I did the blurry background. So nothing like Chris Cheng's, nowhere close to her um, outcomes, but 
I enjoyed trying it. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed doing that page. Such a small page, but I did so much playing around with it, which I really liked. So that's Animaux de la Forêt um, by Caroline Allen, and it's an art therapy book, beautiful quality books. All right, then we go to my Rita Berman books. And um, I did this page here. Now this page was um, Karen Dash Pablo's. So the background I was playing around with, the colors I've used, other than maybe the gold, the antique gold of my Albert Dura set is what I used for the bottom here. But everything else was the Karen Dash Pablo's. I love it. It gave me a nice change to my color choices and color combinations. So it changes things up a little bit using a different set. So I've used Albert Duras for so long that I didn't realize obviously using a different set of pencils will change up my, my even though I try and possibly naturally go for the same sort of a color combination for like my blues and my yellows, it will turn out a bit different. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing that uh, on here. And I tried to do a bouquet background, doesn't really work, but I'll try again in the future. I'll keep trying. This was a fail for me. Um, really didn't enjoy this page, unfortunately. So I don't remember. I think I can see a bit of a shadow of pink here. I feel like I was trying to do something funky with the background, with paint, with the metallic paint. And um, I think it's the Arteza one. And uh, I don't know what I was trying to do. I can't remember. But I do then remember going over with the ZSCM acrylic paint pens because I have the thick ones that were sent to me for review quite a while ago and I said I need to cover this up I don't own any other um, acrylic paint other than black um, a normal black acrylic paint which I feel like maybe I should have some but I don't know how much I enjoy using acrylic paint as a flat background um, so I used the ZSCM to cover it up which I successfully did but I just I don't like I don't know I lost heart for the page and so I didn't really put much effort and I just wanted to finish it. I didn't want to leave it unfinished. So I colored it. <laughs> but yeah, not, not not a huge fan of this page. Disappointed that I messed up a, a Rita's page, although I did that a lot at the beginning of my coloring journey. But yeah, so that was, um, sorry, Rita Berman's spring book. I don't know if I mentioned that. M mine. Frulings Spazier Gang, I think. Then I have Rita Behrman's Land Book. Um, Land Under the Microscope, I think, Die Welt Unter der Lupe Zulande. I have no, no idea about how to say, how to speak German. <laughs> I learned French in school. All right, so this is the page I did, and this is a color along on the channel so again there'll be a play playlist for it and um, love how it turned out so I used um, distressing for the background Tombow jewel brush pens for basing a lot of the elements like the leaves and the berries and the scarf and then everything else is with my pencils Albert Juris and glitter gel pens love it Really enjoyed coloring it. Always enjoy a Rita Berman page, other than the one I just showed you <laughs> that I messed up. Um, but yeah, really liked that page. I wanted to do this page in autumn this year and I didn't get around to it. So disappointed, but I want to color in, basically my aim for 2024 will be to color in some of the, my fair, my, the illustrators that I had very early on in my coloring journey. So Hannah Carlson, um, Maria Trolle, Rita Berman, all of them, I think I have neglected a little bit more once all these other new styles of books came out. Um, so things like mythographics became a favorite of mine this year, I think in 2023, I really enjoyed those books. So they did take more of my time, but there's so many different kinds of illustrate uh, books out there now that it's so hard to limit it to a small collection, isn't it? But anyways, this is Rita Berman's Mind Research Asian. Or should I show you Europe first? Because that's the one that came out first. <laughs> and yeah, I did this page. Absolutely loved it. Didn't get around to doing the other side. I want to do it exactly the same. Luckily, I've done a color along for it. So it's up on the channel. 
there is a playlist for this book and I'm going to do exactly the same on that page. So I'm glad there's a colour along so I can follow it along for the other page. But um, Albert Dura pencils, guys, for the background to make it look like a watercolour effect. And then the foreground dry. I might have used a bit of Tombow Jewel brush pens. Can't remember. The colour along is up there in case. But yeah, glitter gel pens, metallic paint, uh, metallic paint sprinkling loved how it turned out it's an autumn page but i love that i put that blue in there to give it the pop and the red just pops out of it as well it looks really nice i really enjoyed doing that one and then i did this page i'm just trying to think i don't think this is a color along on the channel but like i said there's a playlist for this book so if if i did this as a color along which i don't think i did actually but if i did it will be up there but really enjoyed coloring this page as well um, again, just my Arbiturus and maybe Tombow Joe brush pens and glitter gel pens and acrylic paint pens. And I'm, I've just finished one here. I'm not going to show it to you guys for January <laughs> because that's 2024, not for this video. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's Mine Research Europa, the Europe book by Rita Berman. And then we have... Rita Berman's Asia book, Mine Research Asia. And I did this page here. There is a color along up on the channel. Playlist is up for this book. Loved how it turned out. The only thing is because I've not done a background, um, when I covered up the black lines of the clouds, I feel it gets lost a little bit in the page, but Nowadays for clouds, I find it very hard to leave them with the black outline. Um, so yeah, I did that and I don't know if I regret doing that, but I like the colors I chose, nice and bright and happy and beautiful. And there's some gel pens there. Again, apertures. Um, and I did this one. This is not, a, oh no, it is. I think it is a color along on the channel. Yes, it is. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there should be a colour along for this page as well. Love how this turned out. <laughs> Very different colours. Looks more, this looks quite cool tone, doesn't it? And this is quite warm. Um, but yeah, loved how this, I uh, loved colouring this page. Arbic Dura pencils, paint pens, Tombow Jewel brush pens for mapping out all those fruits. I remember doing that because like I said, when we have tiny, tiny elements and so many of them to colour on a page, um, it does challenge me a little bit to see how to distri distribute colours. So I map it out with the Tombow Jewel brush pens and then went over with the pencils dry. Glitter gel pens for the fish. Yeah, nice, nice page. What's that? Oh, no. Okay, so that was Rita Berman's Mind Me Sturge Asian, the Asian book. And then we have Rita Berman's Africa book, Mine Research Africa, which just came out, newest book. Um, she very kindly sent this one, oops, sent this one to me, as you can see. Um, and I did this page. Now, I thought I would have colored a lot more pages in this book, but I'm so intimidated to color them. So many people are coloring in this book. It's just thrown me off a little bit. And I'm, the page I did in, was it the Europe book I told you I've done one in January, has been the first one since I coloured this page in a Rita Berman book. And I just needed to get myself back into my Rita Berman books. I just feel a little bit lost, a little bit intimidated for some reason, but I love how this page turned out. Um, love the colour palette I've chosen. I do feel like it does represent a lot of African colours that you would see in their artwork, in their clothing, things like that. So I love how it turned out. It's not an easy page for me to colour, even though it looks like such a simple page to colour and a quick page to colour. For me, again, it's a challenging page. So pages which are landscapes and have realistic elements to it, like leaves and, you know, grass area and mountains and water, it's easier for me to tackle those kind of pages than it is for sort of like a pattern, sort of a pattern page, um, which is not a seam. I find these pages quite challenging. I don't know why, but 
um, just to, to figure out how to lay out the colors and where to lay them out and things like that. That's what I find challenging. But I'm glad I tackled this page and I love it. And I'm just, I really want to color another page in this book. I just have to stop seeing other people's pages for a bit, but love it. Yeah, at least I did one page in the book so far. So that's the Africa book. And the next book I have is Crystal Vogels. I think this was one of the first books. I think she has other books, but um, the books that suddenly became quite popular was this series from Top. Um, I can't pronounce that, guys. I won't even try, but there you go. And I did one page in this book so far. Actually, I tested out, I was testing out the book first with my Albert Dura pencils and I think I've gone in with Derwent Intense to try it and Pablo's to try them, but um, and Tom Bojo Brushman. So I was just testing out on that page, but this is the first completed page. I used Distress Inks for the background, and then I used um, I think Albert Dura is for the bait for the grass, but then everything else I think I've coloured with um, Pablo's just to play around with them because I think they were fairly new for me. Um, so again. It just helps using different pencils because I think the color combinations have turned out quite different and I quite like seeing some different combinations from myself um, so that not every page looks so samey but I know the grass is definitely in my Albrecht Dura's activated with water and then dry but yeah really enjoyed this page beautiful paper um, unlike the other books from top like the Ursula Schwab books these are stitch bound so that's really good um, they lay flat quite well. Um, the illustrations are stunning and I do want to colour more in it. I just need the time. And there's um, two other books I think since this one in this series that has come out. Um, like the most recent one I think was a Christmas or wintry one. And then she's coming out with a new book, um, Mermaid or Underwater themed book. So look forward to seeing what that's like as well. But I only have this book of hers so far. The others are on my wish list. Um, all right. Then I have a uh, Kanoka Igusa, Symphony of Cute Animals. Again, I barely tackled any of her pages. I, this is only the second Kanoko Igusa page I did in 2023, which is such a shame. But um, it's nice seeing all the pages I managed to colour, but I've just realised how... Um, how many illustrators I've just not shown enough love to which is a bit disappointing but anyways I loved coloring this page Albert Dura pencils for the background activated with water and the ground and then with the pencils dry but I also used Tombow Draw brush pens for basing a lot this book is one of those Japanese edition books that I was mentioning that um, you can blend direct to the paper you can use water to the paper on the Tombow Dual brush pens to blend them out. They don't bleed through. Um, so it works really well, the Tombow water-based markers on um, in this book. So really enjoy using it. And yeah, love how this page turned out. Again, Kanoko Goose's book, I don't feel needs much glitter and shine to it. So barely any gel pens there. <laughs> Maybe just on the top on those centers of those flowers. Love how it turned out. So that was... Kanoko Goose's Symphony of Cute Animals. Then I have Usiku's Year of Witches. And this is the page I did here. Really enjoyed doing this page again. Um, so I used alcohol markers. Yeah, for basing. So this book I got, actually I got from Amazon Japan to test if the paper would be different, which to be honest, it is thin, but it feels a bit different and water-based. So my Arbor Juris work well on it, um, or work better on it. So yeah, I do prefer the paper, but I think I need to, I think I've just recently bought RJ Hampson Serendipity his new book um, from Amazon Japan because I just recently did an Amazon Japan order and I decided to test out the Amazon paper again in a different book to see if it's any different and to compare it to another RJ Hampson book which is Frog's Tale that I have um, to see what the difference is and how I feel 
but uh, I do feel obviously it's still Amazon quality paper thin paper but I feel like my pencils worked better wet media worked better um, but anyways I used alcohol markers on this one and I used Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils um, so again because of that my color palette was so different and I love it because yeah I don't usually use that much purple but because I was getting drawn to those colors in the Pablo set colors that I don't have um, in the Albert Juris um, yeah it gave me a very different look to my page a very different color palette loved doing that page and I added those trees in the background but I think if I'm not mistaken for those trees I used my Albert Juris because I activated it with water and then oh no sorry that one is one I've just done in January so not showing it to you guys yet but on that particular page I used um Albert Juris to see how that works with with Ohuhu alcohol markers so this one I did Pablo's and that one I've done my usual Albert Juris but I'll show, the, show you that at the end of January completed pages so this is a secret year of witches I really like that page actually then another new artist for 2023 Claire Therese Gray Woodland watercolor a coloring workbook so I tried to play with my watercolor paints on here and um yeah I didn't go over with the pencils dry I decided to just leave it as that I did put a bit of uh, glitter gel pen for the centers of the flowers and a bit of um spectrum noir clear glitter on the leaves I think or metallic watercolor paints for the background I used watercolor paints and I put some metallic Arteza metallic watercolor paints as well for the background for, for this painting I think I used the Paul Rubens yeah Paul Rubens watercolor paint set and the Arteza metallic for the shiny bits so yeah I enjoyed doing that I prefer a pencil finish but it was fun trying that out and I, I look forward to trying to use more watercolor paints in this book lovely book um so Woodland Watercolour by Claire Therese Gray. Another new artist for this year for all of us is Sarah Shevchik. And the book is called Spooky Colouring Book. A very cute book, different book, um, beautiful quality paper. Um, I think it's the same quality as Maggie, is it Maggie Ontario's Flowerscapes books? Um, it's a really good quality paper and um, I did this page and it's a colour along on the channel so there will be a playlist for this uh, book and I really enjoyed doing it so I used my Arbrick Jura pencils to give that watercolour effect for the background everything else as well is Arbrick Jura pencils I may have used Tomboy Jura brush pens for basing I use metallic watercolour paints for the background really really enjoyed doing that page actually I think it's because of the quality of the paper it wasn't very neat with my sprinkling of the metallic paint I should have put a paper there but luckily there's no page uh, no illustration on that side so yeah really enjoyed that page spooky um by Sarah Shevchik then this is very embarrassing guys so this is Leila Dooley's The Flower Year and I've only done one page in this book. I got this book at the beginning of 2023 and I did January and that's all I did, which is very disappointing. I did really enjoy doing this page though. Um, however, I hopefully, I think her new books that she's come out with, uh, I know the newest one is uh, Walk in the Woods or something. Basically, there's a couple of new books now. Um, one is soon coming out and one released in 2023. I think those books are bigger because I feel these elements were so tiny to colour. Even though the artwork is beautiful, the florals, is, the botanics are stunning. But on a lot of the pages, um, okay, maybe not those ones, but like, this page there's so many tiny tiny elements to color which was a struggle <laughs> um but i did enjoy coloring this page that's the thing the paper quality is beautiful the artwork is beautiful and i do like coloring flowers and my aim was to do all the um, month pages 
in 2023 so february march like that do one a month but yeah with the number of pages i managed to do a month there's no way that was going to happen but i'm very disappointed that i only managed january but i really enjoyed it um albrecht drew pencils and um possibly tombow jewel brush pens for basing because all those tiny especially those red leaves in the background just to break up all the green um i'm sure those were albrecht jewels and i mean tombow jewel brush pens and then just went over with a little bit of shadowing with the pencils but that's Leila Dooley's The Flower Year. Flower Year. I didn't get her new book that came out in 2023 yet. I do have it on my wish list, but I'm quite interested in the next one that's coming out. So we'll see. Um, maybe because it's bigger, I might be more inclined to color in it. All right, then the next book I have is Morgan O'Brien's Matchstick Mouse Floral Book. And this is the first Morgan, um, first Matchstick Mouse book I got. And, um, I did a few pages in here. So I did this page, soft pastels for the background, um, arbiturus as the pencils and paint pens and sprinkling of uh, metallic paint, Arteza metallic paint and glitter gel pens are there. I've kept the fur for um, matchstick mask the same throughout the book so that it's an easy book for me to tackle if I wanted to despite that I still don't find the time to come in color such a small illustration yet um, it's meant to make it easier for me by just keeping the, the fur color the same so I've just noted down the color somewhere here we go um, so that it's it's a pick a book that I can just pick up if I don't have the brain power to plan a, a more intricate coloring page um, this is another one I did, I think, for Mother's Day last year. I feel like I may have used a bit of Pablo's because my browns are very different and the blues I've used there are different. So I think for those areas, I may have used the Pablo's over Tombow Jewel brush pens. Yeah. did this one again basing with Tombow Jewel brush pen but when I say basing with Tombow Jewel brush pen for Amazon books I don't use my brush pens direct to paper because um, yeah the nibs will get messed up very fast they'll get frayed um, so I use it um, on a palette the soft smooth side of the Caran d'Ache palette and then I use a paintbrush to paint it on um, the water the paper soaks up the, the, the ink quite the pigment very fast by the way but as you can see excuse me I had a sneeze um, so yeah I use the Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing quite a lot and then I will go over with my pencils this one as well this one I used uh, Pablo's I can tell because of the colors um, a bit different to the blues and yellows and stuff I use so Pablo's did I use a base though a little bit maybe of basing with my and I think I may have blended the background with a Derwent uh, pen so I blended out the Pablo's and then went over with the pencils again I did this one I think this must be the most colored book <laughs> in 2023 um, so I did this page I think this might have been my first page um, of pastels yep and then arbiture pencils and tombow jewel brush pens i'm sure yeah they just get soaked in into this paper and this one i really like this one the vibrancy the colorful bold colors and i used um yeah i used the pablos for this and i blended the background with the derwent blender again then uh, blend a pen and then I went over the pencils again that's why it's so vibrant so I feel like when you use the blender pen um, or some sort of blending solution on the Pablo's it makes them more vibrant especially when you go over with the pencils again and I must have used Tombow Jewel brush pens yeah a little bit of Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing and that's it so that was Matchstick Mouse a floral coloring book by Morgan O'Brien and then I have Eight Paws, Forest Girl, the first book. And 
this was the first page I did, which took me forever. Um, I did the background with soft pastels at the end of the page. So first I did the foreground with my pencils, Albert Dura pencils, all dry. I wanted to see how I could work uh, with the pencils dry first. Loved replicating the page. Um, again, like I said, the color choices is not something I would usually do. I go for very bright colors. So it was nice replicating the the colors and putting in all those patterns. The, the sweater was all plain and I tried to replicate the, the pattern onto the sweater as well and the texture. Hopefully you can see that. And then the other one I did was this one. Really enjoyed this. Again, Albert Dura pencils, uh, dry, other than for the base, which I used soft pastels just to base it. And then I did a bit of pencil work to darken it up a bit more and paint pens. But yeah really like it again loved replicating it because of the color palette not something i would usually be able to do think up myself <laughs> so yeah two pages in april's forest girl the first one not long to go now guys um i have the lizzie mary collins the magical city yeah i haven't got it. this was one of the very first books i got back in 2015 2016 um when was it released but yeah very very early when when coloring had in stock um so i started this book in 2017 yeah it was released in 2015 but i did this page and it's been a long long time since i've colored in this book so i'm glad i did color in it and i just yeah i got the inspiration to try it out um with my albert Dura pencils now that i had the derwent ink tents i might try and come in again and see how I can work with it because yeah with pencils it would take forever um but I did do you do this with my Albert Dura pencils activated with water and then I did go over certain areas with the pencils dry because watercolor pencils are not as vibrant as for example the Derwent ink tents because of the um ink in the Derwent ink tents so I do feel sometimes I do need to go in and darken up my shadows. I did use paint pen in this page, which I've never done in obviously any of the others other than white paint pen, but I think I want to try and tackle with my skills now, possibly do another page in this book in the in, in the near future. There's a forever whip and I say it's a forever whip. I don't have many forever whips. I have two. One is in this book and one is in um in Fragile World by Kirby Rosans, which I think I will tackle. So it's not gonna be a forever whip. This one is a forever whip. It might stay it. Um, because I lost inspiration of how to color in this book, but you never know, maybe if I tackle another page, I might be able to go back to that. But yeah, I really like how, how this page turned out. So um, I just need to try and tackle another one now and see if I can get back into this book. So that's The Magical City by Lizzie Mary Cullen. I have Emily Lydahall Oberg's Fairy Tales. I'm really looking forward to her other book coming out again. I think I preferred the illustrations in that book, but I was too late to get it when I started coloring. Um, I'm less fond of this book than I am of her other book from what I've seen of the other book. Um, but I colored this page and um, I really like how it turned out. It, there is a full color along for the summer channel. We're in the winter season, so yeah, check it out. Um, there'll be a playlist. Um, Neo Color 2s for the background. Albert Durer's for the rest. Possible, yes, uh, Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing. So yeah, really enjoyed that page actually. I love the colors. <laughs> so that was uh, Emily Liddehall Oberg's Fairy Tales. Then this was a new book. I think it's called Secret Invitation. I'm going to have to uh, translate it and write it in the book because now that I have so many um, in books from like Korean illustrators, Japanese illustrators, and they're not in English, I'm starting to forget the names of the books now. So I'm going to have to make sure I put them in inside the books. But this is the page I did. Very simple page. I just wanted to play around, I think. Mindless coloring. Um, I like how it turned out. 
And then I use watercolour paints just for that little area there. Again, just trying to play with watercolour paints. Um, but I'm trying to tra tackle bigger areas of watercolour paints now, so that's good. But I was starting off very small. And um, yeah, Arbitura pencils. Beautiful paper. Again, quality of the books are amazing. Really liked doing that page. Very simple, very relaxing. Secret invitation, I think. Then I have Eerie books. Let's see the order. Okay. All right, order of publication, not order of coloring. Uh, Eerie's Romantic Country, The Fair Stale. This is, uh, this is, yeah, this is a Japanese edition book. So the good quality book. Uh -huh. And I had done this page right at the beginning of the year. There is a color along for this on the channel. A playlist will be up. And um, Arbor Jura pencils and basing with Tombow Jewel brush pens. A lot of white paint pen and sprinkling of Windsor and Newton ink. But I loved coloring this page. I loved doing it as a color along for you guys. So um, yeah, hopefully those of you who like following along to color alongs, hopefully you enjoyed that. I, I really enjoyed colouring that page. And this is the Japanese edition, so really nice thick paper. Yeah. So Romantic Country by Iri, the first book. Then we have Romantic Country, the second tale. This is the first Iri book that I got, and it was the English edition. So it was available on Amazon UK, which is why I did buy it at that time as an English edition, I did not realize the paper would be so smooth um, and a struggle to work with, but recently I've started figuring out how to color in it, so that's good. And um, I did uh, this page here as a buddy color. I used distressing for the background, added those trees in the background to make it look like a forest. Um, and then um, Arbor Jura pencils and then I was just thinking these bits uh, these little leaves got covered up with doing my distressing because yeah it was hard to get into all the areas so I did cover them up but I used paint pens to draw them back in because paint pens are opaque they, once I'd done all my pencil work I just went over with the paint pens to bring back those leaves which was good and then just a bit of pencil to deepen up the shadows um, really enjoyed this page added those little leaf effect on the bottom just to break up the, the page a little bit, all the browns. Really had fun with this page. And yeah, that's uh, Romantic Country, the second tale. And then I did Romantic Country, the third tale. And we did this as a colour along on the channel just recently. So if you haven't checked it out, it's up there. There's a playlist. So I really like doing this page actually. I did all the snow effect myself. Went for a blue, blue post box. I wanted it to look different and I wanted it to look cool. Love the orange that's coming through. Really, really had fun actually with this page and I love the colors I've gone for. Again, slightly different to what naturally comes to me. So um, all I knew was I was gonna do a blue, blue post box and then I just let everything else sort of, um, yeah come to me really enjoyed it actually um romantic country the third tale and then we have another eerie this was an uncolored book so i'm glad i colored in it and this is world heritage travel through time and this is the page i did loved coloring this page as well this was quite early on in the year as well may around may and um i used my Twilly Art paint pens to add all those uh, pink bushes again, like I did in, which book was it? The Tatiana Bogema book. Just because I felt it was quite empty in the background, I wanted it to be a vibrant, colorful page, and there were just leaves in the background, and I wanted some color there. So I decided to add those bushes, and I think it works. I think it doesn't look like proper flowers, but it gives the idea that it might be flowers there, right? Um, but I just like that I broke up all that empty-ish space. Um, I'm just thinking about it. I didn't use Thule Art paint pens. I actually used Windsor & Newton white ink just to cover over those uh, the line art. Yeah, that's it. Windsor & Newton white ink and then I coloured over with my pencils. Lots of paint pen work. 
and I think I just used my I want to say I just used my um, I used Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a little bit and I want to say I used my Arbor Jewel pencils but I think the blue is from uh, Pablo's so the blue framework and stuff is from Pablo's and then the rest is Arbor Jewel's I can't remember for this page sorry guys but yeah enjoyed that page um Eries, world heritage tra travel through time last stack of books now not many to go all right um polar brooms animal de bois love this book only got one page done in it um but i love the page i went for a simple page just because it was a new art style for me um a new artist new paper which wow the paper is just amazing um, just use my Albrecht Jura pencils, paint pens, and I did a bit of painting with my Albrecht Jura pencils off a palette and a paintbrush to add um, those little <laughs> flower effects. Um, and I did a bit of the paint pen work to sort of add um, those little dotted sort of flower effects, but loved this page. Even though it's so simple, I enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, again, like the muted colors of my pinks not something I usually go for. So really, really like this page. Um, really, I'm coloring, I'm still coloring in the whip in the Amazon book. So hopefully that will be done soon, but I really want to do more pages in these books. There's a new book coming out by Paula Brun. Um, super excited for it. And so hopefully, I don't know when it's coming out, when this year it's coming out, but hopefully I'll get my hands on it as well. But I need to color more. Um, but anyways, Mel Pomeni, Chatsi Panikitu's Nature Mandalas, love her art style. Not my favorite book, but I do enjoy coloring in it. Um, not my favorite book from her, her other books. I did this page, really love it, love the colors. So the turquoises, the coral sort of pink, the orange, I think it works so well. Um, lots of because there's such tiny elements on the page, oh, I'm so bad at picking up the glitter. There we go, the shine. I use a lot of glitter gel pens in her work to fill up certain areas um, and just to give it a bit of shine and um, interest to the page. Really like it though and loved coloring in it. Um, it takes me a while to come to some of these uh, mandala pages. I like that it's not just patterned mandalas and it's nature themed. Um, and I, once I figure out the palette, like for one section, um, then it's such nice, easy coloring. So that's really good. I do like this book that way. And then this was the other page I did very early on in the year, in February for winter. And again, um, this one I wasn't so sure about because I thought I'd gone very dark with the purple, but now when I look at it, I don't mind. It's, it's nice, it's different. Again, um, I think, I'm trying to think, yeah, I used um, metallic gel pen for the framework, but then I colored over it just to give a bit of shadowing to certain areas. Um, I like to do that because as you guys know, I've mentioned, I don't like flat color all the time. So I like to add a little bit of um, depth to my shadow areas. I like how this turned out. Again, lots of glitter and metallic gel pen, yeah. That's it. So that's Nature Mandalas um, by Mel Pomeni, Chatsi Panikitu. Then I have Mel Pomeni, Chatsi Panikitu's Enchanted Earth. Oh, that's one page I've just started. <laughs> we have this page here. So this was a new book this year, right? Yeah, it must be because it's March 2023. So I must have got it this year and it's pretty much started this page. Um, so it's the cover illustration. I didn't copy the cover and co cover and illustration. Um, I did my own thing. The leaves on the top, there were so many and so tiny. I just did use Tombow Jewel brush pens in different greens to map out the colors. I didn't go over with pencils. I just left them flat um, colored, but I used some glitter gel pen as well in certain ones, just to give it a bit of interest. And everything else is with my Arbrick Jura pencils and Tombow Jewel brush pens basing. I love doing that in her books, basing with the Tombow Jewel brush pens and then going over with the pencils dry. 
and then using glitter gel pens and paint pens and stuff. I don't use too much paint pens in her work because it's so detailed, it would take me forever, but just certain areas, um, I think. A lot of white paint pen, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I might have used. Oh, well, maybe I didn't use any um, other paint pens, but there we go. And then the other page, which is a color along on the channel, there's a how I color video actually um, for the background with distressings. That's what I used. And then there is a color along for the pencil work in the foreground. Love coloring this page, love the end result, love all the color on this page. Um, so yeah, I really liked doing that. Again, Arbor Dura pencils, um, activated with water and then dry. Now, a lot of people asked whether the distress ink went through when I did the sprinkling water effect, and it did a little bit in some areas because I got it quite wet. But unfortunately, the paper in this particular new book is slightly thinner. It's still smooth, it still works well with the pencils. Everything worked beautifully on it. Um, but it is a little bit thinner than um, Circle of Life and Nature Mandalas. So ever so slightly, but I think that's why it might have bled through a little bit. Love it though, love this page. But yeah, like I said, there is a color along on the channel. Um, so Enchanted Earth by Milk Many Chatsy Panicky too. All right, guys, my last stack of books, um, sorry, my last um, series of books, which are the mythographics. All right, so I have Fabiana Atanasio's Frozen Fantasies. Oh, I've typed so many for winter season and I haven't done any yet, but this is the one I did last year uh, in 2023, in January 2023, so it's been a while. Loved it. Neo Color 2 is for the background, Arbor Dura is for the foreground. Yeah. And some paint pens or um, or acrylic paint pens, I can't, um, metallic. Yeah. Um, really liked it. Really enjoyed colouring this page. It's very rare that I don't enjoy a mythographic page. Um, Fabiana Atanasio's Frozen Fantasies. And then I have Fabiana Atanasio's Paradise. Did this page as a colour along on the channel, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, just check it out. I'm sure that it must be a colour along on the channel. Um, again, my Arbor Dura pencils for basing, I mean for activated with water for the background and for the water. Um, Tombow Jewel brush pens, which I use a lot for um, mythographics, but now that I have alcohol markers, I will try and use alcohol markers as well. Um, yeah, and a lot of paint pen work. Loved how this page turned out, actually. I think every time I looked at this page, I wanted to color it, but I, but I wasn't sure about how to figure out the perspective. Because this bit is underwater, that bit is above the water, and the way the line art was, I couldn't figure it out, but I think it worked out in the end. And then I did this earlier in the year. Loved this page, loved the colors I chose. Don't know how it came to my mind to use these colors, but um, there is a full beginner series that I have. Again, there will be a playlist for the beginner series on this particular page. So um, starting from things like choosing a page, choosing your color pa your colors for the page, um, then doing the coloring, the blending, highlights, shadows, and then embellishments at the end. So yeah, I think they're like four videos and I did it on this particular page. Love how this page turned out. And this book obviously has a lot of hidden objects. I tend to cover up the hidden objects as much as I can. You can sort of see the log there, but I cover it up um, in majority of the books because I don't, I, yeah, they, they take away from the picture. Like having a log right there in the middle of, of that planet just ruins things. There was like a fishing rod that right here that goes all the way up to there on the bird such a massive hidden object as well it's just um the positioning was just all wrong as well but really enjoyed this page as well the colors yeah all right so that would you'll be able to see that on the beginner series so it's sort of like a color along as well you'll get all the color combinations and stuff for that then I have um, Mythographic Dream Garden by Fabiana Atanasio. Again, 
this is a how I color video with my watercolor pencils, my Albert Dura pencils. And I shared all my tips and tricks of how I use my pencils, um, using them for backgrounds, the different techniques I use for activating with water, using them on wet paper, using them, the pencils dry on wet paper, ap applying them wet onto the paper, things like that, basing with them, backgrounds with them, coloring dry with them, everything. Um, because like I've mentioned many, many times, sorry about that again guys this time i ran out of space on my phone so i guess i've gone on for way too long but um so i was talking about this page and i have a how i color video on using the albert Dura pencils and all the tips and tricks that i use um but yeah what i was saying is like i've mentioned before i can use my albert Dura pencils as the only medium other than maybe some paint pen work these days, but say I didn't have anything else, just my Albert Dura pencils, I can do a whole page with that, depending on the paper. Um, I can use it for backgrounds, I can use it for foregrounds, I can use it wet, dry, and it's just a brilliant, very versatile um, material to have um, on hand because yeah, I showed it on this particular page. You can basically do this whole page in just the Albert Duras. And then everything else is just sort of a little bit of extra, you know, something something um for the page so all the embellishments and stuff like that um so yeah i share all of that on this on a video for this page but i loved how that page ended up turning out so that was from mythographics dream garden fabiana atanasio and then i colored i colored in a few mythographic books um just shows how much i actually enjoyed them this is fabiana and atanasio's menagerie and I did this page for early on in the year for winter. Love how it turned out. Love the limited palette. Um, Albert Dura pencils for everything. Background activated with water, but I did go over with the pencils a little bit. Um, love the color of the snow and everything I used just to um sort of tie in with the color of the background that i chose so the fact that i didn't go for like just blue snow um again i've done a video on how i color snow with different color combinations um which you might fancy checking out just to give you different ideas for all your wintry pages and then the red panda and i love how i did the tail really enjoyed this page um again yeah just my albert Duras. Um, so Menagerie by Fabiana Atanasio and then I have the Joseph Kattenbang books so we have Aquatic and I did this page which I absolutely love again you know when I come to do my um, favorite completed pages of 2023 I don't think I can do it on this video seeing as I also got cut off from recording because I've been on here for too long um, I'll probably do it in a separate video I'll try and keep that one short because you'll have seen the pages just to point out the ones that I think I loved but I feel a lot of them would be coming from the mythographics that's how much I enjoyed coloring in them this year but yeah I love this page again love the colors I've used um, I always had the idea for this page in my mind um, of a red umbrella and I wanted everything else to look a little bit um similar colors um so that the umbrella stood out and i love how it's turned out so yeah really enjoyed that page glad i finally colored in it this is one of the older joseph katambine books with hidden objects so i cover up the hidden objects so that's aquatic and then i have joseph katambine's odyssey this is my most challenging book um from the mythographic series i think for me because a lot of the pages are very, very detailed, but I find, and so it took me a while to actually get started in this book. And I finally tackled this page uh, for Mermaid again. Love how it turned out. And I use Pablo's on this particular page. Tombow Jewel brush pens for basing a lot of the elements and then Pablo's even for the sky and the water. And I think for the water, I may have used a blender pen to blend it. Um, yeah, so I really, really like that. And obviously my paint pen work and stuff. And I just um, based the mermaid on Ariel from The Little Mermaid. So really liked that one. And I'm glad I coloured in this book finally. So maybe I'll have more courage to try and tackle some of these crazy pages. All right. Odyssey uh, by Joseph Kattenbein. Now, I can't remember where... 
which ones are the newest of um, the, the last few books from Joseph Kattenbang, but I'll show them to you anyways in whatever order they come in. So Joseph Kattenbang's Voyage. So now some of his latest books are absolutely stunning. I love, love his um, newer books. Um, I don't know what has changed, but there is a subtle, there is a little bit of a difference from his older books like the Aquatic book and um, Imagine was a very early book. I think was that his second book? Um, so yeah, I really do like his, um, I love his art. I just love his imagination as well. But this is a page I did. This is the first page in this book I did. Neo Color 2 is for the background. And then Albert Durer is for the foreground, I think. Love the colors I did. Love the color of the, the wood I did, the metal cage. Again, just trying out different things. But I, I and I love that I kept the wings um, sort of uh, linked the birds with the it's not a fairy because the wings are bird wings, but yeah, you know what I mean. So really enjoyed that. And this page I did for in October this year, uh, 2023. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Neo Color 2 is for the background and then everything else is my Albert Durer's. And paint pens, of course really enjoyed colouring this page actually and again a limited palette which works so well it's just I find it's so hard to do so Joseph Kattenbang's Voyage I have books all around me it's going to take me a while tidying up then we have Joseph Kattenbang's Magical Earth again I absolutely love this book and I think this is the book yes that has my giraffe page in it that reminds me so much of Kenya and um love how it turned out I poured my heart into this page and every time I look at it it just makes me smile neo color twos for the background and then I just deepened up the shadows or smoothed it out instead of smoothing it out with neo color twos which I would normally do off a palette I just used my pablos because there are colors that match up with the neo, neo color twos so I did that and then um Albert Jura pencils Tombow Jewel brush pens possibly for basing like the pinks and maybe the trees and then my Albert Jura's and love my clouds here and the colors just work so nicely purple and green just look so good don't they I remember loving coloring that page and just taking my time with it because I loved this page so much um Joseph Kattenbang's Magical Earth And then this is the last book now, guys, and I'll leave you guys in peace. Joseph Kattenmang's Aviary. And I did this page here. And again, of course, I loved it. And uh, I used Neo Color 2s for the background. Love that I went for the rainbow effect. I used the Pablos just to smooth out again in the shadow areas since I had colors that couldn't match it up. And I used the same Pablos then into the, so like the, pulled out the turquoises and the pinks and the yellows to do the leaves and then everything else is my albertures loved doing the rain effect so the droplets were there were the droplets there i can't remember mm. i'm trying to see if i can see the line art i feel like i can see a bit of the line art there maybe i added more droplets myself but they were uh, droplets of rain from uh, Joseph Kattenbang's line art and I used uh, Artex acrylic markers with the brush tips to do the strokes and I added some more and I did the splash effects myself for the water and the dripping off the lanterns myself as well so I really really liked this um, doing this page and yeah looking at all these mythographics just make me realize how much I've enjoyed them in 2023 I think the mythographic series has probably been my favorite in 2023 but um yeah there we go i will just pull out some books here in front of me just to end the video um so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it turned out to be long i did try not to ramble as much but of course i can't just flip through the pages right you guys won't watch it if i just put it to music um but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you enjoyed just seeing a wrap up of 
everything I coloured in 2023. I enjoyed watching it. I mean, going through my books and pulling them out and recording it for you guys. Um, and it was nice because I couldn't remember certain pages I did during the year, but it was also good because I realised how many books I've not showered love on in, in the year. Even though I've only done like one or two pages in majority of the books so basically I was trying to color in as many different books as I could I wasn't just concentrating on one book I was trying to do as many dip into as many different books as I could but because I don't get as many pages done a month I couldn't yeah I couldn't do all my the books in my collection but there are certain artists I'm going to have to try and get back to like my Hannah Carlson especially her older books love them um, my Clara Markovas need to be shown some more love I think my love for mythographics right now is so strong that, that I will definitely continue coloring in them in the new year but yeah I want to make sure that I try and tap into some of the books that I had early in my coloring that I used to love and colour in so much, I need to bring those back out and not just colour in, in my newer books. But what I do find is because I have uncoloured books, I tend to go for the newer books because I want to make sure I do at least one page in all my books. And I think that's what's um, diverting or, you know, uh, taking my attention away from the older books. Um, so I want to make sure I try and reduce the number of uncolored books I have. And that's why I'm not pulling out my older books as much because I know I have, you know, a fair number of colored illustrations in those books. But um, yeah, it was nice looking at it so that I could actually remind myself that how much I loved coloring in those books and get back to them. But yeah, I'll stop talking now and I'll leave you guys to it. Like I said, I'm not going to record the um, add the my top colouring books into this uh, video because it's long enough. I'll do it on a separate video and I'll be back with you guys again soon. So until then, take care. Thank you for watching. And yeah, before I, I go, let me know what you guys, what your favourite pages were in the comments section below and I'll see whether they tie up to the video I'm going to post um, my, my, uh, my top colouring pages on. So I want to see what you guys think and how, it dif how different it is to what my picks are. Alright guys, take care and see you in the next one. Bye bye.